The UCAT results are now out. So in this video, I'm gonna take you through them, show you what they mean, what to do if you've got a low UCAT score, probably why that we've got these scores this year and why they've changed so much. And more importantly, what to do with your UCAT score given all of this information. But stick around for the end because I'm gonna give you a free resource that's gonna show you what to do in your individual circumstances. So you can go on the UCAT website for this, but the easiest way is just to search UCAT results and go to the UCAT results page and it'll take you directly to the thing that you want, which is the test statistics here. So let's have a look at this and what we have so far. So the first thing that I noticed that we have 37,913 test takers. Now that is higher than I have seen it, I think ever. That's the highest I've ever seen it. That's a record because previous years we've hit 37,000, I believe once. Um, so it's interesting to see that it's gone up. I'm not surprised given that the BMAT has been dropped so that everybody has no choice but to sit the UCAT this year who's applying to undergraduate medicine. Now, the next big thing is this increase in the total score. Now, this doesn't come as a big surprise given the circumstances of the UCAT. And I'm going to explain what to do with all of these scores later, how you can use them, but also reasons why we're getting this. But Last year, you may remember, it was 2,516, and the, but that was a jump in itself. However, the year before that, it was 2,500 exactly, and before that, it was 2,499. So we have had pretty significant increase in the last couple of years. Now, again, this because everybody is taking the UCAT pretty much. You'll have a small pocket of graduate medics who are applying to four-year courses of the GAMSAT universities, but bar that, Absolutely everybody has to take it this year. So an increase in the overall score. Now we'll talk about what that means for you applying later. But let's have a look at the individual sections. Now verbal reasoning, I think people are starting to understand how to crack verbal reasoning because 601 is the highest score ever, um, certainly for the last five years. But verbal reasoning typically doesn't do that great. For example, last year it was 591, before that 567 and then uh, kind of stuck around the 570 mark, really. But um, this is the, the highest I've ever seen it, which is quite an interesting increase. So decision-making is 620, which is a little bit down from last year. Last year was uh, 623. However, what I've noticed this year is that people were struggling most with the decision-making. These are the questions that I got from people the most. Um, they were stuck on it, struggling to improve. And the one that we most managed to improve people in the Future Doc program was in the decision making. So, but that, this is about the same as it always is. It's, it, it's like I say, gone down a little bit from last year, which was 623. But the year before was uh, 616. And then it's been around 610, 625. So, usually fluctuates around the 620 mark. Then we've got the quantitative reasoning, which is exactly the same as last year. So, 2023 was also an average of 649. And generally the trend in the last few years that quantitative reasoning used to be the best and usually around a 670-ish mark and went down last year for the first time in a while but again has stayed down. And also practically remaining the same is the abstract reasoning. So last year it was 652, this year it's 653. So a small, small increase. That was actually a decrease from the year before which was a bit of an anomaly at 659. So again, the abstract reasoning has stayed pretty much where it is. So really you have three sections here that have remained roughly where they are in the, from the previous year. And they've kind of stayed in the realm of where they normally are, or at least have been in the last year. But really the main feature is that we've had a big bump of 10 points in the verbal reasoning, which is quite significant. As Like I say, I've never seen it cross the 600 threshold. And that is probably what's given us a six, an eight point increase on last year's average. So kind of the numbers seem quite high, but actually not that much difference from previous years. And like I said, given the fact that we are um, having way more people than before set, sitting the UCAT, the most in history, and we've got such big importance on it this year, which we'll discuss in a moment. This is why we're having more of these scores increased. Now, also what's interesting is the decile rankings. Now, this really, if you told me that the number of people sitting the UCAT is going to increase, I would tell you without even looking at the scores that the range is probably going to increase. And that is exactly what's happened, really. So, if you want to look here at the deciles, the total score, previously it was 2,150 and the year before 2,120. So it stayed roughly around the same, but it has gone a little bit lower than the year before. And also the 
score to be in the top decile has increased as well. So last year it was 2890, the year before it was 2880. So now it's pushed into the 2900s and quite significantly really, 2920 to be in the top decile. Now what you'll probably see me talk about and if you're on the Future Dot program, the, the thing that we train our students to do is to hit 3000 because really, especially if you're a grad or if you are really competitive about where you want to go, you want to be it above 3000 really to take control of it. However, you have a pretty good chance as long as you're in the top three deciles, I would say. So let's have a look at this des this threshold here to be in the top three compared to previous years. So 2680 versus last the last two years was 2660 to be in this. And really before that, about 2640-ish. But it's always remained kind of around that 2650-ish mark. Um, and it's quite an important one. Again, it's gone up only slightly, but really doesn't change all that much. You have um, the same number, kind of the same rough score to get into those top three deciles. So it's really important to bear in mind that the UCAT is a small part of the application. It's probably the biggest part, the biggest small part, but it is still just one part of it. There are so many other elements and we have a video that describes exactly what you need to do to really have a rounded application and maximize your chances. So it's important to know this stuff, but bear in mind that this is just one part of the story. And it's so important not to underestimate all those other elements to make sure that you're submitting a strong application. So a uh, not amazing UCAT score is not, it's definitely not the end of the road. And you know, if you need some help with finding out how to maximize your application and optimize it based on what you're working with, do reach out to us at the Future Up program and, and we can always have a look at that sort of thing. However, it is always better to come with a really good score so you can take control of the application and, and not take any risks, basically. Now, let's have a look at the situational judgment this year. Now, I have seen a lot of people on the comments in YouTube um, telling me that they've not had great bands. So, you know, band three and band four. As you probably know, you want to get in the top two bands. Now, this year, we can see Normally, compared to the previous years, this collective score of the band one and band two is above 50%. Now, you can see that it's 49, which is not a million miles off. But sometimes, like, for example, last year, it was significantly over. We had 25% of people achieve the top band and 39% of people achieve the second band. So what we're talking. So that's um, quick maths while I'm recording is... Um, 64 people so nearly two-thirds of people were in the top half here less than half this year less than half are doing that but again looking at previous years we we kind of 50 above 50 percent or at least 50 percent is usually the standard and it ranges from anything from about 50 to 66 percent so important to realize that there will probably be a lot of people this year who are applying with a band three or a band four so important statistic where if you're in maybe if you're in the band three a region and you're thinking that it rules you out or you're in trouble just bear in mind that this year people have performed generally not so not as well on the sjt now this is a really cool thing um is that you can actually this year look up your exact percentile which is quite cool so as i say always i like to aim for 3000 with my students and this year for the first time it will probably like normally that would put you in the top five percent some years in the top three percent this year it'll put you in the 93rd so kind of the top seven ish percent of people so interesting to note that you know getting a 3000 for me is more important than ever to really take control and have your pick of the litter when it comes to medical schools so really what we want to do is look at why has this happened why do we have our final total cognitive mean score, the highest it's ever been. Why do we have um, a best verbal reasoning score ever? And what does that mean you can do if you're applying and, and how to use this? Now, the first thing I'll say is because the UCAT this year has been the sole test. So before you would have some people that are only doing the BMAT um, and that would reduce the number of people taking the test of the UCAT. However, you also have this thing where now the UCAT is way more important than it was before. It was always always really important, but you have one attempt if you're applying as an undergraduate. And this exam is the only shot that you have, whereas before you had the BMAT up your sleeve as a backup in case you it didn't go to plan. Now, because of that, people will obviously be a lot more focused on the UCAT. They'll put everything into it. 
and they won't have their energy split across two exams. So singular focus, more important. So that means that people will put more effort into it and you have everybody just pulling towards the same thing. Now, the other thing to bear in mind is that although the deciles spread are the same, the number of people in each of those deciles has increased. So imagine if you have 10 deciles and you have 30,000 people taking the test, in each decile you have 3,000 people, right? Whereas if you have 40,000 people, which is what this is closer to this year, per decile you have 4,000 people who fit into all of those. So the, the although the number of UCAT takers has gone up, the number of medical school places available has not. So you've got people with a higher performance still trying to compete for those same places which is why it is so important to make sure that you do everything in your power to get the best possible score and if you're in the, the pool of people who are a little bit unsure of what to do now how to maximize your application or you think maybe this isn't the year for me to apply and I'll go again next year I would really strongly that consider that you join or apply to join the future dot program because we get people every year regardless of how competitive and how well people are doing in the UCAT we get people who have done 2,300, 2,400 in the UCAT, so well below these mean scores. And then they've gone through our program and the way that we teach, we've taken them up to a 3,000. You know, you'll see some testimonials of some of the students from last year who didn't get in and then have come to us for help with their second attempt and got into King's College London, Oxford. So it is not out of the realms of possibility if you have not done an amazing uh, test or you've not got an amazing score that you the, the journey's over for you. There are still options in this cycle and in next cycle. So if you'd like some help, do come and talk to us. But inevitably, people want to see what's in my crystal ball and, and hear my predictions. So here they are. But first of all, let me say that if you did get a low UCAT score and you're not sure what to do, check out this video that we've made about what to do with a low UCAT score. And we list some of the universities that you should consider if you're in that pool. Now, low is maybe a harsh term, but if it's not the score that you were hoping for, check that video out. However, let's see what we think is going to happen with the universities in the face of this score. Now, the first thing that I would say is that probably all of the known universities, the, the historic UCAT universities that have, you know, they've got data and they have told you previously, this is the threshold cutoff for what we, uh, for who we invite to university, all of that sort of stuff, their thresholds will probably go up. So places like Newcastle, which has a definitive cutoff, but below they won't interview anybody those sorts of places will have more people applying to them who have made the cut you'll have fewer people on the borderline but the av the number of people like i said before that, uh, that lie in those deciles that score is going to go up so people will be more likely to go for that and that's going to push up the average so that's a really first important thing to bear that in mind now bear in mind these are just predictions so i could be way off but you know i'm taking a risk putting it out here in the public domain but then I think you'll have other universities which will have way more competition. Places like Leicester, Cardiff, Liverpool, who place a lot of weight on GCSEs and academics. Now, these people or these universities will have more people going to them who've got really strong GCSEs who want to be risk averse. So the standard of people applying to those, because obviously it will be a certain UCAT achievement that will that will go towards those universities so the standard of people or let's say the number of people competing for those places will be higher therefore you have to be better to be in the top group of people that get offered a place again this is why optimizing all of your application is so important so that then it's not just about the UCAT it's about everything else and how much you've done with your work experience how well you perform at interview which is such a crucial part and often underestimated these are the things that we need to bear in mind when we're applying to these places. Now, finally, what are we going to do about the old BMAT universities? We have no data. We have no idea what they're going to have in terms of thresholds. And I predict, again, just based on human behavior, that it's going to go one of two ways. It's either going to be, for example, Oxford, Cambridge, Imperial, uh, UCL. These are all universities that historically have very high, uh, they're highly competitive and you need to perform well in the BMAT to get there. These universities, I predict, is going to go one of two ways. Either it's going to be incredibly high and we're going to look at it and go, well, obviously, it was always going to be a high score. Or the opposite could happen. And again, this is just human behavior, human psychology and just how people work, is that you may have people all think, well, you know, it's going to be really high. It's unpredictable. I don't want to take a risk on it. 
So paradoxically, not many people are going to apply to it. So the people with the kind of okay scores who are willing to have a chance and people might find that they are jammy and get in front of the interview and get in front of the panel and deliver a really good interview and that gets them in the door. So that really is a difficult one to judge based on your individual circumstances. But this is why I always say when you're choosing your universities, it's not just about my UCAT score, my GCSEs. It's you as a package with your strengths, your weaknesses, all your experience that you have. And you have to be really granular and really individual. So again, if you want some help with that, check out the future.program. This is where we come into our own with looking at you as an individual and what you should go for and in your specific circumstances. And that is why we have that success rate that we do. So really worth checking that out. So thanks for watching. I hope you found that useful. If you go to the future.com website, you can find a free resources page, which is going to give you a really useful infographic that will tell you what to do in each circumstance. However, if you're in a position where you are going to have to resit or you're in a tricky position with your UCAT score and need to maximize every single part of the rest of your application, check out this video here to find out exactly how we can help you and be one of the people on the Future Doc program that last year got a 93% success with getting into their first choice university. Thanks for watching and I'll see you over in that video.